Throughout history, one of the worst things that a person could be accused of was being a heretic or a religious criminal. This would often result in a horrific execution. For example, during the reign of Mary I, many people were burned at the stake in public, in front of huge crowds for being religious criminals. Some people who dared to question the church, or do anything revolutionary, were often treated with immense contempt and suspicion. And one man who during his life escaped execution was John Wycliffe. He was an English scholar and reformer, who translated the Bible into common words in English. However, later his followers were persecuted, and following his death his remains were dug up, and were subjected to a posthumous execution. But what is the story of this? Join us today as we look at the execution of the remains of John Wycliffe, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. John Wycliffe was born in Yorkshire, and he was educated at the University of Oxford. He rose throughout the ranks at the university, and later became a master of the college, but he then resigned in 1361 to become a vicar. There were petitions at the time to the Pope to provide for Wycliffe and to give him support financially. But on the 7th of April 1374, the English King Edward III appointed Wycliffe to the rectory of Lutterworth, and he received a royal commission to travel to Europe to settle differences between England and Rome. And he was considered a patriot and a key man for the king. However, he later launched attacks on the church and the beliefs and practices of the church. He attacked the idea of transubstantiation, that the bread and wine used in the Eucharist was changed to the body and blood of Christ. He then began to preach against this, and he launched attacks upon the Pope, the cardinals and the clergy, as well as monks and friars. He had a restless mind that continued to launch tirades against the church, and he was very well read, and could defeat many of his opponents' opinions and arguments and debates. Many scholars agree that Wycliffe, despite this, was a man of religion, but he believed that the church should have been handled very differently. He sought a genuine desire to reform the church, and he believed that what they were doing was wrong. He took on the Catholic Church, and he would do this in one of the most serious ways possible. From August 1380, Wycliffe, whilst in his room at the Queen's College, was working on plans to translate the Bible. He wanted to bring the word of the Bible to the people of England, as they at the time could not read a word of Latin, and relied on priests to talk them through the Bible. Wycliffe wanted to make the law of God available to anyone who could read, and this way of preaching and belief led to Lollardism and the creation of the Lollards, the followers of Wycliffe. However, in 1381 came the Peasants' Revolt, and this was partly sparked by Wycliffe's preaching. He had an affinity with the poor in England, and although Wycliffe disapproved of the revolt, some of his followers justified the killing of Archbishop of Canterbury, Simon Sudbury. Many of his helpers were based with him at Oxford, but in November 1382, he was summoned to the Synod at Oxford. He was expected to face banishment or exile, but he did not receive much punishment. Wycliffe wanted to replace the church hierarchy with poor priests, who lived in poverty, and had not received formal consecration. However, in the years before his death, he argued for scripture as a centre of Christian church and worship, saying that the scripture was the most important part of it, and was certainly more important than the Pope, the monasteries and other aspects. He made enemies of the monks, and he returned to Lutterworth and preached against the monks and the Pope. But he continued to work until his final days, but on the 28th of December 1384, whilst he was saying Mass, he had a huge stroke and then died a few days later. Following the stroke, he never said another word, and his body was then buried in Lutterworth churchyard, and he remained there at rest until 1428. However, then something bizarre and shocking would take place involving Wycliffe's remains. The Council of Constance was called, and this declared John Wycliffe a heretic on the 4th of May 1415, and all of his writings were then banned. He was then in death excommunicated, but in the centuries later, he would be an early advocate of Protestantism, but he was too early and suffered persecution in his death. The Council of Constance went further and declared that all of John Wycliffe's works should be burned and that his remains which had been laid to rest for decades were to be dug up and exhumed from consecrated holy ground. They then said his remains once removed 
should be destroyed. It was in 1428 when this order was carried out, after it was confirmed by Pope Martin V. Inside the churchyard in Lutterworth, John Wycliffe's body and remains were dug up. They were then burned in a fire in the churchyard. Wycliffe's corpse was burned in front of the crowd, and then it was reduced to ashes, and then these were thrown in the River Swift, which flows through the town of Lutterworth, near to his burial site. In the years following his brutal exhumation, John Wycliffe's work was destroyed, but during the following century, his ideas would almost be visionary. He was a man who predicted that the Reformation would bring a huge amount of change, and later the Bible would be translated into English during the reign of King Henry VIII. Other men sought to finish Wycliffe's work and to ensure that his legacy remained in religion and in reforming the church. His posthumous execution in the churchyard, in which he oversaw the local church, was brutal and was savage, and took place decades after his death, meaning that much of his remains had decayed away in the years following. He was, though, a constant thorn in the side of the church, and for this the church would later after his death have the final word on John Wycliffe's heresy. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.